Hello and welcome to the Design Essentials Theory. A design is basically a sketch of your application, containing a drawn out version without functionality. It's, it's kind of like a blueprint. It contains the structure, the layout, some content, and all this without making a fully functional web page yet. But why do we actually create a design first? Well, we create them to better understand what the end result will look like, to make sure that it fits the requirements of the application. And when you design your pages first, building your application becomes a breeze because you don't have to think about the design choices. When you start designing your pages, you will have a general idea of what kind of data you need and what you want to be displayed. So there are a few things that will help you get started designing your pages. The first one is to have an idea what the end result is sort of going to look like. This will help you to more easily design towards the idea. Think about what kind of pages are needed to have a fully functional application. Do you need a home page, a contact page, a create page, a data page, you name it. What is it and what are we going to show on these pages precisely? In order to design your pages, you can use many tools, a piece of paper, just some tools online, but my recommendation is using the Betty Blocks page builder. So the page builder is a drag and drop interface that allows you to build web pages by dragging and dropping components onto a canvas. The page builder uses components to create reusable blocks that you can share with others and reuse in different applications. And using the page builder doesn't require any HTML knowledge at all. Components are pretty straightforward. When you first elect a component that you'd like to use, click on it and drag it to the top of the canvas. When you release the component, it'll be placed on the page where the blue line appears. You can drag a component on top of another component. For example, you can drop a bottom component inside a row component. This is how the page builder is set up. It exists out of a bunch of building blocks. These building blocks show the search bar and your component overview. The tab next to it is the data tab in which you can create variables to use for checks and recurring elements. The third tab is the settings overview, showing the page details like name, the path, the page description, the component URL for when you want to use your own components, an authentication profile, that can be used to only let certain people be able to visit the page and the page type, allowing you to set what kind of page your page is. Is it a home page? Is it an error page, etc.? You can set it to be specifically that kind of page. And there are some more settings, for example, the option to delete your page and to save it. And you can also change the viewport that you want your page to be displayed in. For example, you can click on the mobile view to view your page as if you were watching it on your cell phone, or you can change it to tablet view to change the way you are looking at your page as if you have your tablet in front of you. The component tree allows you to view all the components on your page. It's displayed in a hierarchy in a parent child kind of way. This means that when you have a row with a column, the row is the parent and the column is the child, but that column can be both. When we drag a button inside the column, the column is still the child of the row, but now it's also the parent of the button. Whilst the button is just the child of the column. This is called the hierarchy of the component tree. The component settings. When we click on the component via our canvas or via the component tree, we'll see the settings of that component. On the left-hand side of your screen, there are a lot of settings for every single component, such as style, allowing you to fiddle with the way a component looks, its size or color. We can change the event settings. Once we click on a component on our page, what should it do? For example, should it redirect? Should it trigger an action? Or should it do something else that components specifically can do? Data settings. The settings that allow you to control what kind of data it needs to show or filter on. 
And these settings may vary per component, so make sure that you play around with them and get to know them. The canvas. This is how the users that visit your page will eventually see it. It's the front end of your application, and the changes you make here are automatically saved. The canvas is responsive, meaning that whatever you change and however you look at the size of your monitor or your viewport, for example, if you change your viewport to your mobile phone, the page will respond to the size of the screen. This is made possible because the pages in your page builder are created with a column and grid design. A grid uses a horizontal and vertical spacing and is 12 blocks wide. This is a measurement that we use for the grid and column design. This is entirely one row and it contains 12 columns. You can define your grid to be, for example, 12 wide or maybe six wide, which is half of the page, or perhaps just two. The grid will still hold on to the 12 blocks rule. You can, however, position your six wide in a way where you tell the grid that the first three blocks should be skipped. Then you want to use the six blocks in the middle of the grid and then skip the final three blocks again. Now you have a centered grid in the middle of your page. That's half the size. This functionality gives a huge amount of flexibility whilst you create your pages. Styling. One of the not least important things for designing pages is makes, making sure that your pages are styled appropriately. In Betty Blocks, you can use the Team Builder. And within the Team Builder, you can declare various of options. Like for example, what should the primary color of your application be? We can then give this primary color to various of components on our page and it'll be displayed in the color that we picked in the Team Builder. This allows you to create your own look and feel for the application. So make sure to check around the Team Builder and hover around the fonts, the thickness of certain components like lining and of course the general style of your application. Set it in the Team Builder and adapt your application to that color palette of your company.